Devils. Coach Kelly's illness 10 days ago. He was not with the Blue Devils at Cameron for the 89-71 win. He's on the bench tonight. All right, so that's the one change in the Duke starting that, lineup. That, that would uh, be the one change. And coach is back. And, of course, Jeff Capel is very able associate head coach. And the Blue Devils have won four straight and six of the last seven. They shot 52% from the floor in a 27-point victory over Pittsburgh on Saturday at Cameron and a match with number two Virginia looms large coming up on Saturday and of course the Cavaliers tonight beat Clemson at John Paul Jones Arena and the only other ACC game on the card. Moore and Marvin Bagley III get us started here tonight in Winston-Salem on the parquet floor of the Joel Coliseum and Trevon Duval Brings it front court. And the Deeks opening a man to man. And again, it's you got to figure out a way to guard Carter and Bagley. And I don't know how you do that. There's Carter with the left hand move to the basket. Not like that. Fourth best field goal shooter in the ACC. His teammate Bagley, the third best field goal shooter. Well, let's imagine how much we'd be talking about Carter if Bagley wasn't on the team, yep. if he was still in high school where he's supposed to be. Yep. Marvin Bagley the third. one of the more interesting storylines is the reclassification, of course, and he committed to Duke in August. Shondi Brown's a freshman from Orlando. Doral Moore off the baseline ties the game. And that's really unusual. That's 81 field goals on the year now for Doral Moore, and 52 of his field goals are dunks, so he's not generally known as a jump shooter. He has developed a little bit of a baseline jump shot through the course of the season. Duval out of the corner for three, missed everything. Wilberton cleans it up. Now Duval on the year, his three-point shooting numbers are pretty poor, and conference play much better. And there's a turnover, and here's Look Bagley out. showing you the tools. And he will draw the bump and foul from Wilbekin before he dished it to the trailing teammate. Well, here's Bagley at 6 feet 11, over 230 pounds. He just took that ball west and exploded down the court and beat one of the guards for Wake Forest and forced a foul. And, of course, he had 30 and 11 the first time. And he has had 15 double-doubles on the season, six in seven ACC games. DeVal puts it in play. Here's Carter. And Carter is not going to shoot it from that far away, but he's a capable three-point shooter. On the drive, DeVal. And Bagley bumped and fouled, and that'll be on Terrence Thompson, the grad transfer from Marshall, who grew up in Durham, his first number two on Wake Forest. And one of the top offensive rebounders you'll see is Bagley. Look at the way he just at the middle of your screen there. He just moves in and slides Thompson out of the way. You've got to be stronger than that and hold him out. Foul on Allen. And the Blue Devils regain the lead. Grayson Allen averaging 15 points a game, 14th best in the league, but just 11 in conference play. He has not shot the ball necessarily well in conference play, Wes, but he has played very well. He's done a nice job distributing the ball, rebounding. There's Thompson. Carter slipped, but regained. And then Trent reached in and knocked it away hey, from right. Shondi Brown. It will stay with Wake Forest, but Gary, Gary Trent Jr. has made most of his headlines offensively here in the last handful of games for the Blue Devils, but did a nice job defensively there. Well, Duke has started in the man to man. Here's Brown. Well, I think you've got to be aggressive against Duke. Five to shoot. And Brown traveled with it. Tried to skip a pass across the floor to Crawford. Drug the pivot foot and the turnover on the Deacons. But I think this is a really difficult team, the Blue Devils I'm talking about now, to play against at the end of the shot clock. I think you need to attack early. And I'm not when I say attack, you've got to beat the guy out on the perimeter. You don't necessarily have to drive all the way to the basket, but you've got to create open opportunities by beating those perimeter defenders. Bagley going to work. Duval. Here's Carter backing down more. High off the glass wow. and in for Wendell Carter Jr., his second field goal. That's the issue. You stop one of those guys and then the other guy's open. Two and a half gone, live for more. Too high, maybe a bit too hot off the hand of Crawford, and Wake Forest gives it back. 
Four-point lead for Duke, but the Deacons that time tried to get something at the basket early in the clock, Dan. That ball was just simply not well thrown. Moore was open in there. Three straight turnovers by the Deacons, who trail by four, and here's Bagley at the post. Leans in with a right hand. Banged around, and finally out of there with it. Comes Thompson. Tried to go to Crawford. Allen saves it. Trent. Here's Bagley in the open floor for the dunk. Grayson Four straight turnovers on Wake Forest. And Grayson Allen made that play by diving on the floor and getting that basketball and from the, his backside made a nice outlet pass. And I'm telling you, you get the ball to Bagley in transition, there's just nothing you can do to stop it. Three minutes gone in this first half. Already a six-point lead. And there's a foul on Wake Forest for the moving screen, and it'll be on Thompson. That's five straight turnovers. This is... Crawford just falls out. Look at Allen coming in there and then makes a great pass to Trent. And Trent immediately looking down the court. And there's just nothing you can do to stop that. And Terrence Thompson comes out of the ball game with his second foul. And Olivier Saar, a young freshman from France, into the ball game for the first time for Wake Forest. It's seven feet tall. They've got two seven-footers out there right at the moment. Five straight turnovers for Wake Forest, and Duke has taken advantage of an early six-point advantage. Bagley loops up a three. By the way, for Bagley, that's his 36th three-point attempt of the year. He's hit 12. Will begin at the other end. Important basket for Wake Forest, Dan. Absolutely important basket for Wake Forest. And as you mentioned, Bagley can hit that three, but if he's going to take that shot, that's okay with me. Deval rattled out on the triple. As we mentioned, he's the one guy who struggled a little bit from out there. Brown works against Trent. Now Moore with Carter defending. Poked out of there by Trent and taken away by Carter. That's a serious takeaway right there. Allen on the drive against Saar draws the foul. Number one, Olivier Saar. Number four on Wake Forest. Got to attack, and they don't want to give up turnovers. They don't want to give up offensive rebounds. And for Wake Forest, we mentioned they've got to protect the ball, but mainly they've got to make jump shots. This is a Duke team that's going to put some points on the board. You're not going to beat the Blue Devils 60-59. to 59. Free throw by Grayson Allen, 83% on the year. Duke comes into the ball game at 68-6, which, believe it or not, is 14th in the league in regular season play and they're under that in conference play Dan at 67 percent it's very interesting this is a dynamic Duke team on the offensive end and yet they shoot free throws so poorly yep Brown out of a double team this is Crawford on the drive left it on the front rim Ted Valentine a whistle and this is going to be on Marvin Bagley the third and Crawford is down there on the baseline I think he landed a little awkwardly when he came down so Bryant Crawford Silver Spring Maryland Jr. I think that's a great philosophy to attack but I think you've got to once you get past that initial line of defense you really have to be careful about whether you go all the way to the basket against those two guys inside number two free throw shooter in the ACC you see just eight misses and almost 90 attempts. And the first one good. Yeah. This is a guy who has to produce offensively for Wake Forest. And sometimes he gets going a little too fast. Sometimes he tries to do a little too much. Ben, when he's at his best, he is really, really good. You see coming up on Saturday on the ACC Network, two ball games for you at four. Some of you will see Miami and Florida State's second match of the season. Syracuse-Pittsburgh, the other side of the 4 o'clock start. And then primetime, Wake Forest and Louisville. What David Padgett's done a nice job, oh, Dan. Boy, he sure has. Under circumstances that's Absolutely. difficult, doesn't even begin to describe Allen that offensive situation. foul. Lowered the shoulder on Wilbekin there. So Grayson Allen's first and number two on the Blue Devils. Well, this is really a nice job by Wilbekin moving his feet in there. Just that when you have that kind of contact, shoulder to chest, that's always going to be called an offensive foul. And that's one of the things you have to do on defense against Duke. you got to keep them in front of you. Once they get past you, that creates all kinds of openings on the inside. Brandon Childress on the floor for the first time. He got Crawford's spot a moment ago for the Blue Devils, or for the Deacons. And the Deacons may not have Keyshawn Woods tonight, right. and that might be an issue for him. He's struggling a little bit with a knee problem, and so that could affect the Deacons' depth. 
There he is sitting on the bench. And it takes out 13 and a half points, a ball game. The junior transfer from Gastonia. Three-point lead for Duke. Almost five minutes gone in this first half. Five to shoot for Shondi Brown. A little hanging two-pointer, good. Brown's first bucket, averaging six and a half a game. Well, when the Deeks haven't turned it over, they've been, been able to score pretty effectively. Trent in traffic. That ball got <laughs> deflected off his hand somehow. Carried right on in, didn't it? <laughs> That'll look real good in the film room tomorrow for Gary, won't it? I had that one all the way, guys. I don't know what you're talking about. Put that one in the offensive playbook. <laughs> Back to a three-point Duke lead. Where Saar handles it really well for a big kid at seven feet. Left the jumper on the back of the iron. Moore the rebound. Pushed it back up and in. Oh, there's Darrell Moore with two non-dunks already. And Wake Forest doing an outstanding job on the offensive boards against a Duke team that is a very, very good rebounding team. Wake Forest trails a point. The Blue Devils with the ball. Trent. Here's Allen. And Bagley now with Saar defending at the block. Inside and it rolled off the back iron and last touch by Duke. That was Says Bill Covington Jr. That was really good defense by Saar. On the other side, Durrell Moore. That ball with Bagley and Carter sort of swatted away from one another. And Durrell Moore is right there and gets it back up very quickly. You know, there's a little bounce in the step of these Wake Forest Demon Deacons all of a sudden. And after some early sluggish possessions offensively. And there is the drive, and Shawnee Brown going to be whistled for the offensive foul. That'll be his first, number five on the blue, on the Deacons. And that's now seven turnovers by yeah. the Demon Deacons. Well, they had five straight. Absolutely. And now all of a sudden they've kind of calmed things down, but give one back there, and you see they're minus six in the margin. But for Danny Manning, you have to be pleased with the aggressiveness. You know, the guys can't be passive. They can't be hesitant. Yes, that was an offensive foul. That was a turnover. Probably not the best decision in the world, but you like the aggressiveness. The foul beats Carter, and Moore draws his first foul. And that's exactly what I was just talking about, Wes. When Duval is able to beat you out on the perimeter, that creates openings on the inside. And when those two guys on the inside, it's uh, Bagley's on the bench right now. Deloria is in the game, but with the Duke inside players, you cannot go helping out against penetration because they catch the ball and score too well. Wendell Carter Jr., 66% at the line. Missed the first one. Coming off a 21-point, eight-rebound game against Pittsburgh is... Wendell Carter Jr. as Deval checks out and Alex O'Connell, freshman from Roswell, Georgia, wearing number 15, has come onto the floor for the Blue Devils. Second from Carter, good. And O'Connell has become a rather valuable spot kind of guy for Duke. He comes in, handles the ball pretty well, plays very hard, and he can make a three. And the ball got loose. Saar tried to recover out near the midcourt line. There's Allen again. And finally, it's Saw who chased it down for Childress. In the corner, Brown. By Carter, squeezes the trigger and scores. Tied at 13. Seven minutes gone, first half. And Wake Forest is quietly five of six from the floor. Carter. And a travel call on Ted Valentine's whistle. And Duke's second turnover. And again, there's Saar moving his feet pretty well, staying between his man and the basket. And Brown passes up the three. And I, I don't know how he maneuvered all the way to the basket. I thought that was an open look from three. But he elected to pass it up. And he's a big, strong kid. And he needed all that strength to get that ball to the basket. Doral Moore comes out. Terrence Thompson, he of the two fouls early, back on the floor for Wake Forest. Here is Saw by Delorier. <laughs> Tried to loop it out. Taken away by O'Connell. Turnover number eight on Wake Forest. If you're Saw and you get the ball that close to the basket, you got to shoot it. Another bounce into the lane. Trent's first no good. Then Saar tapped the second shot out. Allen catches and scores from three. Seven for Allen on his second field goal. Duke is an outstanding offensive rebounding team as well. You just can't give them that many opportunities. Third best rebound margin in conference play. Better than six and a half a contest for Duke. Here's Wilbekin all the way on the drive. 
And badly the recovery. And Roger Ayers calls a double dribble on Marvin Bagley. Stop of the clock, 11.56 to go. The Hall of Fame Duke coach not happy. His team leads by three. Next game with number four Duke in Wake Forest. And maybe not the prettiest girl at the ball, but still very entertaining here early, Dan. And we get a foul on Crawford for a push against Gary Trent Jr. out of the double dribble by Bagley that sent us to timeout. And that'll be now the ninth turnover for Wake Forest. And they just when that arm comes out there and pushes off the, and right in front of the official that's going to be called every time you yep. might be able to get away with that but uh, it's also seven fouls. Fouls official. seven fouls now in Wake Forest and we've played just better than eight minutes they've only attempted seven field goals have the deep so they've got nine fouls nine turnovers and seven fouls now eight fouls and they've only had, they only got seven shot attempts that's a hard way to win the game and yet they're only behind by three and that is two on crawford in about 15 seconds you're going to get fouls trying to guard a guy like gary trent jr the the problem foul there for crawford was that push off trying to get the ball on the inbounds pass and roger Ayers taking a moment here with trent and crawford well, they, they, they were the two who were tangled up on that inbounds play where Crawford picked up the foul and then Crawford did whack him. Well, you know, a week ago Monday, Trent was remarkable in about the final seven and a half minutes of Coral Gables, 30 points against Miami. Well, he took over that game. I mean, it was just unbelievable. One three after another. Well, it's part of a three-game tear for Trent where he's averaged 22 points and hit 17 of 23 from three, Dan. It's amazing. He missed, he's missed a three here today, but every time he gets pulls up for that three-point shot, you just figure it's going in the basket. Well, he missed a free throw. And that's news, by the way. So the Duke lead is four at 17-13. Childress had way too much dribbling. Here's Shondi Brown. Inside, Donovan Mitchell to catch and score. Sophomore from California who was scoreless in 10 minutes in the first meeting. Uh, still a lot of dribbling, but at least the ball moved from side to side there. You've got to get that Duke defense to move around a little bit, get guys out of position. Well, Trent now got five, three in a row for the Blue Devils. Back to a four-point game with just under 11 to go in this first half. You see just the eight field goal attempts for Wake Forest. Of course, they've had a handle on the turnovers, too. Brown cuts loose a three. Oh, Durrell Moore! <laughs> Big fella! <laughs> Push it back with the right hand, son. That's 53 dunks on the year. I'm not sure that many more were as impressive as that one. Here's Shondi Brown. A fly by Allen. Can't hit the layup. And a foul on Delorier contesting the miss with Brandon Childress. Well, the Deeks move the ball here, and they do. Duke just misses the turnover, getting the steal. But when that ball is missed, good heavens. And when you get that kind of ball movement, particularly when the defense tries for a steal and is out of position, somebody is going to be open. And the open man on that play just happened to be Doral Moore, and he made it look very impressive. He had 9.6 rebounds, three blocks 10 days ago, and he's already got a half dozen here in the opening half. Childress weaving through traffic. Brown attacking foul line. And Mitchell kept it alive. Wake another chance as we approach 10 minutes to go first half. And Duke off the Mitchell miss. Deval. Feeds Bagley. Offensive foul, though. Deval going to be called for the charge as Mitchell stepped in front. Nice job by Wake Forest to get back on defense. And Duke really likes to push the ball, so you've got to emphasize that defense in transition. He was standing there waiting, but it's interesting. I couldn't tell whether he was in that restricted area or not. Trevon Duval's first. Number four on the Blue Devils. Two-point game. Ball's got to go from side to side. This Duke defense has to be moved around. Ten to shoot. Less now. Childress got to get busy. On the dribble. Got bumped by Mitchell. Recovered his own mishandle. Inside the shot clock violation now on the Deacons. 
Dan, the longer the clock goes, it more chaotic it is, it seems, for Danny Manning's team. Well, I think you're fine at the end of the clock as long as you have moved the ball and moved the defense. If you've just dribbled it out in front and the defenders have not had to move around, then it's going to be very hard to convert at the end of the shot clock. Carter. Allen off the screen. Got it. Bad news for Wake Forest. Grayson Allen seems to be shooting the ball extremely well tonight. Well, he hit two in the first meeting. He's already got ten with a pair of triples in the opening frame. Five-point lead for Duke. Moore going back to work. And Roger Ayers a whistle and a foul on Wendell Carter Jr. His first five on the Blue Devils. Of course, Grayson Allen, one of the great three-point shooters in Duke history, but he has not shot the ball well for the Blue Devils, particularly in conference play. Yep. From you know, from three-point range, he was under 25 percent. But that's good movement without the ball by Grayson Allen. Now he comes up with it here. 11 turnovers on the way, Forest, and a whistle and foul on Donovan Mitchell for the hold on Marvin Bagley. That'll be the first on the sophomore from Clovis, California, and nine on the Deeks. One and one for Marvin Bagley, the third from Phoenix. After another turnover by the Deeks, and I'm not sure you should be fouling Bagley 13 feet from the basket. You see the stat we just showed you? Foul shot by Bagley. He is a 62% free throw shooter bounds away. Only player in the NCAA averaging 22 points and 11 rebounds. More than that, he's averaging 23 and 13 in conference play. Here is Moore going to work. And he has been going to work all night long, Wes. What an impressive performance by Durrell Moore. Yep. Moore with eight already. And wait to within three. And despite the turnovers, the Deacons still within striking distance as we approach eight minutes. And remember, this is a Duke team that is very capable of big spurts. Mitchell Wilbekin commits his second. That's the tenth on the Deeks with 8.19 to go. Boy, that's, I mean, that's a lot of fouls. And a lot of free throws. Right, so for the last eight minutes and 19 seconds of the half, Duke will be going to the line and getting two at every opportunity. And Gary Trent Jr. will be the first customer to the double bonus. Look at the three-point numbers. We told you what the last three games have been. They're really good. <laughs> and look at the stretch beyond that. Still pretty solid. Bagley out, Delorier in. And here Crawford back in with a couple of personal fouls. The, that's the other problem when these you commit all these fouls. You, obviously, you're going to get guys in foul trouble. Yep. So you're going to have to play with lineups maybe different from the lineups that you planned. There's Alex O'Connell back for a second stint. He's averaging about 10 minutes of ball game in conference play for Coach Krzyzewski. Five-point game. Childress through traffic. Held up briefly. Couldn't finish it. Carter the rebound. Allen pulls up for three. Front rim miss. And Brandon Childress, the long baseball pass, deflected Crawford, and then Crawford tried to get it behind the back to Shondi Brown and turned it right back over tonight. Well, against the league last year, averaged 13 and a half points, but shot 36% from three. So he's down about 10 points and change from where he was a year ago as a junior. But I think Grayson Allen's done a lot of other things this year. Leadership being one of them for a young team. Well, I think he's handled the ball pretty oh. well. You look at his assist numbers. Yep. He's done a nice job being a facilitator out there for Duke. And he's always been at his best when he's pushed the ball and tried to attack. Here is Allen. Another catch and shoot two at the top. And Delorier the rebound. And a fresh 30 for the Blue Devils. DeVal on the drive over Moore. And oh, Delorier just missed a punch. Nice pass to Carter and a foul by Childress. You're just talking about Grayson Allen doing things other than scoring. He's been scoring tonight, but he's also doing those other things. This is just a tremendous job. Again, the defense has to commit, and then Grayson Allen goes and gets that long rebound and makes a great pass. So here is Carter at the line. 
one of two so far, now two of three. It's very easy to say it, Wes. Much easier to say it than to do it, but you have to keep Duval in front of you. If he's going to get some penetration, Danny Manning's defense is just going to break down completely. Down six, and you see the first eight minutes with the turnovers and the field goal attempts in the last four minutes, and it's a seven-point game, largest lead of the game for the Blue Dogs. And I think we're in one of those danger points in the, of this game here for Wake Forest. Despite all their turnovers, they've managed to hang in there. But the Blue Devils have just been grinding away, gradually stretching out that lead. Saar. Wake badly needs a basket. And taken away O'Connell on a pass for Brown. And Alex O'Connell finishes with the dunk. That's just a lazy pass, and O'Connell was laying for it. Turnover by the Deeks, and they're burned by the freshman from outside of Atlanta at Roswell, Georgia. Now he, he showed you some of his athleticism right there. That was a very quick move. A lazy pass, but he stepped right in front and then just carries it all the way for the easy finish. If you're Sean D. Brown, you have to step toward that basketball. If you step toward the ball, then O'Connell runs into you, and it's a foul. But if you stand there and wait for it to come to you, that allows him the opportunity to step in front and go. Well, Duke's depth is starting to... Uh, Kind of round into shape a little bit. O'Connell's part of it. Certainly, uh, Javin Delaria, who we're seeing tonight. Marquise, Marquise Bolden missed games. I think that Louisville-Miami game is a critical game for each of those teams. Louisville playing very well, but that's a tough road assignment at Miami. And the Hurricanes, if they're going to stay in the race, they've got to win their games at home. Nine-point lead for Duke. Out of the Danny Manning timeout for Wake Forest here. The Blue Devils have done a very nice job pressuring the ball, making it difficult for Wake to move the ball from side to side. Three to shoot, Crawford leaning for three. And here is Allen. All the way through, O'Connell a catch and shoot. Got it. Alex O'Connell, 16th three of the year. And after going scoreless in the last two games for the Blue Devils, he's come up with five quickly here for Coach K's team. And this sounds like a broken record, but who was in the middle of all that? Pushing the ball, driving it, and making a great pass. Where's Grayson out? Saar saved an errant pass for Brandon Childress. Childress a long two. And Moore over the top of O'Connell gets his fifth field goal. Now ten points. And it stops a 9-0 run by the Blue Devils. Now, it's one thing to say you've got to keep Doral Moore from dunking the ball, but it's an entire another thing to accomplish the task. Carter reroutes a couple times and traveled with it. So a 10-point lead for Duke. Marvin Bagley the third. Gary Trent Jr. back into the lineup. And tell you what. This is remarkable stuff we're looking at here from a statistical perspective, Dan. Well, it, it certainly is. You know, there's that one, the field goal percentage, he's only third in the ACC. I wonder what's happened to him there. You know, he needs to buck up. <laughs> well, the more this year goes on and the numbers continue to be as consistent and as dominant as they've been for the freshman from Phoenix, you start to wonder just kind of how this all sets up for him. Long three missed badly by Childress Moore. Another dunk inside off a of miss. He has 12. Duke really ought to block him out. Eight-point game, and here's Bagley working against Moore. Up and under with the left hand and scores. Second field goal for Marvin Bagley. Bagley's going to that left hand. You have to prevent him from getting across the lane. Make him go to his right hand. Pull up. That's Crawford. Carter the rebound, DeVal on the drive all the way and draws the foul. Now Bagley is nearly impossible to guard anyway, but when he gets in the middle of the lane like that, you have to try to make him turn the other way. If you, if you let him get to that left hand that close to the basket, there's just nothing you can do. DeVal. To the line where he's 61 percent he is scoreless tonight Dan the real question I was going to remark about Bagley I mean we're almost to the midway point of the ACC now I mean after the weekend we'll be through half the conference schedule for most of these clubs Bagley's numbers historically and we were talking about this today and it'll be a conversation that we move through the remainder of the regular season 
Are we looking at maybe the finest first year performance in the 65 years of ACC basketball? Well, Wes, we're, we're not halfway through yet, but certainly to this stage, I think the answer to that question is that that, that is a very, very good point of discussion. The answer yeah. to that may be yes. Crawford will pull up and he's fouled. And one of the things that's happening to the Deeks right now, Wes, is instead of making a couple of passes and then attacking with the shot, first guy down the court shoots. And that's generally not a good offensive system against the Duke Blue Devils who take it out and go. Crawford's three for three. You don't want your poor shot selection on offense to lead to easy Duke baskets. And that will, that's what we've seen the last couple of possessions here for Danny Manning's guys. Brian Crawford is in the top 10 in ACC play and scoring. And I have no idea what that was all about. Mike Krzyzewski and Ted Valentine exchanging a word. And Shawnee Brown comes out for Wake Forest as Mitchell Wilbekin reports back. Crawford missed the free throw on the so rebound. So that, that whole little discussion cost away for us to point. Yep. Nine point game. Uh oh. And on the drive, Bagley draws the foul. That's twice now that Saar has stepped in front and drawn a foul in a situation like that. Normally, Bagley gets that ball in that particular spot and it's almost automatic he's going to the basket. But Saar just does a nice job moving his feet. That's two on Marvin Bagley, the third, with 4.24 to go. And Wendell Carter Jr. will get Bagley's spot. And Duke has a nice rotation on the inside with Delaria back in the lineup. Mitchell. And here's Childress. Crawford on the floor with Olivier Saar and Wilberton as well. Well, that's, really nice. shoot. that's really nice defense by Grayson Allen. Saar a little up and under. Mitchell the rebound. Traveled with it. Trying to get his balance coming away from the play. And Donovan Mitchell gives Wake their 14th turnover this wow. first half. Grayson Allen did a great job moving his feet and creating a tough opportunity for Wake Forest. The Duke defense has been much maligned at many points this year, but it's been pretty good tonight. Under four to go now. Nine-point lead for the Blue Devils. Delorier. Now to Trent Jr. Ten to shoot. Carter to catch. Six on the shot clock. Trent launches and hits. And that was deep. Ten for Gary Trent Jr. with three and a half to go in the frame. It's a 12-point lead for the Blue Devils. Crawford into the corner for Mitchell's three. And Wendell Carter pulls it away. And now we get a stoppage of play. And a timeout is taken. This is half of Wake's 10, which has produced 10 second chance points. Now Duke has 23 points, though, off the 14. Wake Forest turnovers. And that's the problem. The points off turnover number yeah. 23 Duke, 4 Wake Forest. Don't have to look very far to see what the difference in this game has been. Deacons throwing a little bit of a zone here out of the timeout. Carter, 16 footer. There's Grayson Allen getting his hand on another one. Yep. He's been everywhere tonight. Allen, little runner right hand. Delorier lost it to Olivier Saar. Duke lead is 12 as Childress brings it front court. Handful of Deacons with two. Nobody with more than that here in this opening frame for Danny Manning's club. See, nobody moving. Childress with 10 on the shot clock. Lost it. West, the, the shot clock was down to 14 before anybody on the Wake Forest offense moved from the position that he established when he first came down the court. 15 turnovers for the Deacons. Randolph Childress and Steve Woodbury, two pretty good college guards, just kind of <laughs> look on and say, man. And that ball got deflected. 
Ted Valentine. And it hit Ted Valentine. And he's standing out of bounds. So, so ball's out of bounds. Yep. Nice job by Crawford, though. Mm -hmm. But if, if Ted Valentine isn't there, that ball definitely goes out of bounds. So it's not like the referee caused any problems. Allen working on Shondi Brown. And one. You've got to be kidding. Tough move by the senior from Jacksonville. And he made it pay off for him. Third on Shondi Brown. First deep to three is Brown from Orlando. And Allen just forces his way past there. Brown had pretty good position, but Allen just did not allow Brown to stay in front. He used his strength to get his head and shoulders by, and then it was all over. And Allen completes the three-point trip. Nice half. He's got 13 now, Dan. Well, on a, on a night when Wake Forest has held Marvin Bagley the third to four points, and Wendell Carter Jr. has scored but seven, they still find themselves behind by 15. Turnover is a big part of the story, but Grayson Allen is the guy who's made them pay. Yeah, Gary Trent Jr.'s got 10. Allen having a nice half for Coach K's club. Crawford left it on the front rim. Blue Devils quickly to transition. Nice pass to Deloria to finish. Boy, he can really run, can he? Javin Deloria, the sophomore from Shipman, Virginia, finding himself more and more to the rotation as we work our way toward the latter stages of January in the ACC for the Blue Devils. Well, he was climbing into that rotation until he hurt his hamstring, and now you can understand why. Brown gets the rebound of his own miss. And a foul called on Delorier, and it's his third. He's the first Blue Devil to three. Eighth team foul on Duke. All right, here's Grayson Allen again in transition, and he's very patient. Doesn't try to force anything in his peripheral vision. Sees Delorier running in to the picture and gets him the ball for an easy basket. You see Delorier come out with the three fouls, and there's the Aussie, the sophomore Jack White, and appearing in his sixth game of conference play. His Shondi Brown knocks down the free throw. White played nine scoreless minutes against Pittsburgh on Saturday for the Blue Devils. And you see what Shondi Brown did in one of the early conference ball games for Wake Forest. He had 20 at BC. And here's Wilbekin back for the final 79 seconds. Wes, it wasn't that long ago when we were talking about the fact that Wake Forest was down by seven. And we said, this is a very important stretch coming up for the Deeks. And you can see that they did not handle that particular stretch very well. Trent is white. Deval in traffic, scoop right hand, rimmed out. Saw the rebound. Wake trying to create an advantage. Pull up by Childress. He's good. Brandon Childress first basket. Wake has some guys that can shoot the ball if they can just get open opportunities. And lots of times you can get those in transition. Nice job by Brandon Childress. And Mike Krzyzewski is going to call his use it or lose it timeout. Well, as Brandon, Brandon goes to the bench, how about checking in with Dad? Assistant coach Randolph Childress, of course. Now in his seventh season here at his alma mater. No, it's, it was a two-point Duke lead, and Randolph Childress came down and hit a three. Yeah. And he just pulled up and hit a three. It was sort of an in-your-face kind of thing, and there was some confusion on the part of the scorer's table at Duke as to whether it was a two or a three. And so the Duke strategy was a little messed up at the end of the game, but I'll never forget Randolph Childress just pulling up and drilling that thing. Great, great ball game over in Durham. Fantastic player for Coach Odom here. Deval kicks for Carter. Three at straightaway distance. Showed us the rebound. Plenty of time here. Crawford. I'm not sure that if you wake, you need necessarily to wait for the last shot, although it looks like they're going to do it. Down 13 with Childress out front against Deval. Five. Childress makes the move. Oh, he pushed it up and Moore set it down. Okay, that's a pretty good play. <laughs> it's the way you draw it up, going to the locker room. 6 nothing run by the Deacons. Doral Moore's got 14. Come on, Dan. Well, and they come up and they set a couple of screens and Childers, I think he was throwing the ball to him, don't you? He was trying to certainly Tony Bennett has not had before, and he has it this year with Hall, certainly Jerome, 
and the way that uh, Kyle Guy can play. And then they go get DeAndre Hunter off the bench there. And DeAndre Hunter has given, really given them a lift off the bench. When they beat North Carolina, Roy Williams was quoted as saying that he thought that might have been the best defensive game played against one of his teams ever. And so I, I just simply don't disagree with that. And Virginia's playing at a very high level right now. It'll be interesting to see if they can sustain that as the season winds down. Well, number two, Virginia. Number four, Duke coming up on Saturday on Coach K Court at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Here's the Deacons with three to shoot. The clock running down, and Wilberton misses with a three. Brown gives Wake a second chance. Can't get the roll. Bagley, who just had the four points now in the first half, with the rebound. And one of the things Wake has done pretty well is rebound the ball offensively. They now have 12 offensive rebounds. And for all the problems Wake Forest has had, Wes, they're only down by 11 in this game. They still have an opportunity here if they can just get themselves together in the second half. Remember we said they needed to make jump shots? They were one for 10 shooting threes in the first half. They need to do better than that in the second. Bagley huh, took care of Crawford's attempt. Here is Trent, who had 10 in the half. Allen, 13, 23 of their 41, along to the two wing guys. Here's Bagley working on Saar. And Olivier Saar the foul on the way up. Two on Saar, first of the half on the Deacons. Bagley does a nice job getting position inside, and then with that little ball fake, He's able to get Saar to leave his feet, and that's so hard to do if you're Saar, but you've got to keep your feet in that situation and just make Bagley shoot over you. The odds that you're going to block his shot down there, even if you're seven feet tall as Saar is, are very small. 0 for 1 at the line in the first half, 62% on the year. Knocks that down for his fifth point. Now, there was a preseason quote about Marvin Bagley III that said every time he plays, he plays hard all the time. And it's interesting to talk to other coaches, other people watching college basketball, and the word motor gets used quite a bit, man. And of course, that is a popular word in today's vernacular, but you can certainly understand why it would apply to Marvin Bagley III. He plays very hard. He gets up and down the court. He does not seem to take any plays off. Donovan Mitchell on the floor to replace Shondi Brown a moment ago. Olivier Saar has also come off the deck as Brandon Childress has come in. There's Mitchell a little runner and Bagley the foul. So three on Marvin Bagley the third tonight. That's number one and a half on the Blue Devils. Donovan Mitchell will get a chance here. And the reason that Donovan Mitchell got that chance was that Wake Forest moved the ball. They got it to one side, forced the defense to come over, and they were able to quickly get it to the other side. And Bagley was beaten off the dribble because he couldn't get his defensive position established. Mitchell five of six at the line prior to the miss there on the season. After the Deeks now you really have to take advantage of every opportunity you get. Three for Donovan Mitchell. And if you're the Deeks you have to dig in on the defensive end. Yep. And that's a hard task against this Duke team which is extremely talented offensively. Three rattles out. Carter cleans it up and can't get the shot to fall, but he'll get a couple of free throws. It's really interesting watching both Carter and Bagley as they battle for position inside. Carter does a great job. Looks like he's playing defense there. He blocks out, and then once he gets that kind of position, he is a big, strong kid, and his arms are sort of the length of Sam Perkins' arms. I mean, he's a very long-armed guy. And when he's, he gets the position down inside, you're not going to stop him coming over the back. 7-3 wingspan for the young man from Pace Academy in Atlanta, Wendell Carter Jr. Sam Perkins now, for those of you that don't remember, <laughs> it, was a, it was a little while ago. Just Google yes, Sam Perkins. That's what they do today, Dan. They Google it. Okay. And then click on images and see just who Sam Perkins was. Okay. All right. I accept that. Nine for Wendell Carter Jr. 13-point lead for Duke. Two minutes gone, second half. Childress will stop and start. Couldn't knock it down. Brian Crawford tries. And the rebound for Carter. So while Bagley's been troubled tonight with fouls and that type thing, Wendell Carter's had another strong effort for the Blue Devils. And he'll work on more here. And nice move on the left hand. 
You know, he actually uses both hands better than Marvin Bagley the third does. Bagley is strictly left-handed, but Wendell Carter Jr., when he gets the ball down there inside, he's liable to go either way, and there is another turnover for Wake Forest. And Danny Manning, his shoulders just slumped. Here's Carter. He's out at the free throw line. Nobody comes to help. He's able to take one dribble, a nice spin, and then go to his offhand, his left hand. So 15-point lead for Duke. Wes, you and I did the Miami NC State game over the weekend, and we were talking to Miami people before the game, and they were talking about how the fact that they felt like they did as Trent makes that three. They felt like they did a really good job against Marvin Bagley the third, but they just couldn't handle Wendell Carter. Yeah. Largest lead of the night for the Blue Devils after the triple from Trent. 30 to 4 points off turnovers. You just you cannot survive that. This by Childress. Here's Bagley on the run out. Look, look at this. this. Oh, look oh. at this. Oh. oh, my goodness. Full service for 35 tonight. Good heavens. One more look. Oh, don't show them all of it. 20 point lead for the Blue Devils. Floor in this <laughs> building is that guy, John Collins. First team all ACC with the Atlanta Hawks. He's sitting next to Mitch Shaw, who is a Wake Forest alum and part owner of the Hawks. And it's Tony Ressler, second from the left. And the gentleman to the far left is the general manager of the Atlanta Hawks, Travis Schlink. There's a lob and more is catching down. Well, Duke has had no answer for that. <laughs> 16 for Doral Moore on an eight of eight night with nine rebounds. And the young man I, from I, Atlanta. I lost count. I think at least five of them have been dunks. 18 point lead for Duke. Carter. Allen shot fake. Bagley tried to keep it alive. Mitchell the rebound and then a foul called on Allen chasing up the floor on the loose. Wow. Trick floor performance from Doral Moore. And the struggle is on for the rest of his club. And just as we say that, Brandon Childress sneaks to the basket for his second field goal. It's better than four minutes gone now in this second half. And Wake has only scored four points in the half. Air ball by Trent, saved by Bagley. Allen from the right. Carter put it on the deck and draws the foul. And it is on Donovan Mitchell. Second on Mitchell, third on Wake Forest. There's a lob for Bagley. Right back to it. Nice pass for Carter. And one. Hung on the rim and fell in. Wendell Carter now has 13 in the ballgame. Grayson Allen gets it all started with an excellent entry pass. And Brant, Ryan Crawford does not rotate down sufficiently. Here Moore has to come to help out. Crawford doesn't step in and that allows Carter to catch the ball and score on the inside and as a result Moore picks up the foul. So Moore comes out as does Mitchell. Olivier Saar and Terrence Thompson back on the floor as Wendell Carter Jr. knocks down the free throw. Wes I've been very impressed with the way the Duke Blue Devils have passed the ball tonight. You know, they've only been credited with eight assists in the game, but I think that's sort of a misleading number. I think they've passed the ball very well. Childress flips it to Shondi Brown. O'Connell slipped down, and Brown had the jumper rattle out. Olivier Saw can't finish, and Bagley the clearance. The one thing that the Duke has not done is a very good job on their defensive boards. I think that's now 14 offensive rebounds for Wake Forest, but the key is the Deeks really haven't been able to do much with those 14 offensive rebounds. Here's Bagley, three out front. Rattles off, Thompson the rebound. Crawford will fire. And Carter the miss, or the rebound of the miss by Crawford. 
It's just hard to shoot a three over a guy as long as Bagley. Approaching six minutes gone here in the second half. 19 point lead. Well, when these guys played before, Wake made 10 three point field goals. They made one tonight. Allen had one rattle out. Deflected out. Here's Crawford ahead. And he'll lay it in. In transition for Brian Crawford. Dan, his first field goal gives him five in the game. He had 21 10 days ago. And that's, what, that's what we talked about. He had to have the, the same type of game. And the fact that he has not scored has really been a disadvantage for the Demon Deacons. Well, the only three for Wake Forest is the guy who didn't have any points at all in the ball game at Durham, and that's Wilbekin. And there's a foul on Thompson. But I think those are the only three points that Wilbekin has scored. Yep, correct. So he didn't score at all the last time, and this particular time he's only made one basket. And I think you've got to credit the Duke defense that I think they've done a very, very good job pressuring the ball. The foul will put it in play. Here's Bagley with Saar defending. And a foul on Olivier Saar will be his third. Six now on Wake Forest. And again, it's very easy to say, but with Bagley, you have to know that he's coming back to that left hand. And Saar is in pretty good position, but then he allows Bagley to get position on him by spinning to the left. Bagley is not going to go back into the lane. What you do is you get on that left hand and force him to go back into the lane where you have some help. And for Bagley, it's been mostly inside around the basket. He's missed a couple of three-point opportunities. And really three for eight, that's, th those are not great numbers, not for Marvin Bagley, not this year. And the second of the two free throws. For Bagley. He's now three of five at the line. And a foul on Duval. Trevon Duval second, second on Duke. Don't forget the New York Life ACC Tournament returns to Brooklyn March 6th through 10. The ACC is giving you a chance to win a VIP trip for two. Tickets, hotel accommodations, and a travel voucher. Visit the ACC.com slash VIP for your chance to win. The winner will be selected on February 15th. And we had a good time in Brooklyn Ooh. last year, so we're looking yep. for the repeat performance. Blue Devils, of course, won the championship, beating Notre Dame on a Saturday night at the Barclays Center. Those folks up there in the borough did a phenomenal job hosting the ACC basketball championship. Crawford knocks down the free throws. Only one field goal tonight for the junior Brian Crawford. Now, of course, if you wait for us, you're going to climb back in this one. You've got to get some stops. Lead is 17. Allen thought about it, double dribble. He knew it when he put it on the deck. He looked over to his Hall of Fame head coach. And John Shire, the former Duke guard, looked at Grayson Allen and said, that's okay. You know you, know you did it. We know you did it. <laughs> but fortunately, we're up 17. And Boy, the young man from the Chicago land was a tremendous player. Boy, he sure was. Mm -hmm. And he's turned into a fine addition to Coach K's staff as well. Jeff Capel and Nate James. Of course, Nolan Smith also on the bench there. Taken away by Delorier on a cross-court pass intended for Childress. Allen into the paint. And the call is an offensive foul on Grayson Allen. Bill Covington Jr. from out on the perimeter whistles Allen for his second third on the Blue Devils. Allen again being aggressive. And, you know, you, you, you can be moving at the point that there is contact as long as you have established initial guarding position. And I thought that's what happened with Saar. I thought he got in initial guarding position. He moved his feet to get in the way of Grayson Allen. As long as he does that before Allen leaves the floor, then that looked to me like it was, you know, those are always bang-bang calls, but I didn't have any problem with that one. Check it. I said two on Allen. It's three, and it's four on Duke as a squad here in the second half. Now, Allen has not had the overall performance in this half that he did in the first half. 
Bagley and Carter sort of taking over for the Blue Devils. Childress works off a Moore screen. Seven to shoot for Shondi Brown. Stop and pop off the rim and in. Shondi Brown. Third field goal, he's got eight. You run that screen and roll, and even though Duke handled it pretty well, it forced the defenders to move around. So then when you make an extra pass, and then you have the drive to the basket, that creates an open opportunity. Trent. Back rim miss. Now I think you've got to try to push the ball. Doral Moore, the double-double tonight, and Childress draws the foul. <laughs> I think it's a good idea to push the ball. I'm not sure that was a great shot, but it went in the basket, so they're going to take it. This guy likes to attack, doesn't he? Wake Forest down by 13. Manning told us today the scary thing about Duke is they have so many weapons. If you contain one or two, there's still three or four other ones out there that can really burn you, and that's what we have seen tonight. Well, and with the exception of Allen, the four other guys on the floor, First year guys. Yeah. <laughs> Free throw good by Childress. So here's you talking about first year guys. Duval has not scored tonight. That's right. Allen. Duval. Front rim miss. Got batted around and Shondi Brown on the attack. Oh, nice play. Little reach around. I think it got deflected. Was that Trent? If that was Trent, that's an amazing play because he was trying to take a charge and then realized at the last second he wouldn't be able to do it. Yep. Oh, so he just reaches around. <laughs> These guys have more skills than just offensive skills. I'm telling you, that was a heck of a play. Wilberton with the fresh 30. Mitchell, oh, Bagley out there to contest after the original shot fake got to foul, and there's Childress a three. Well, Wake Forest now to within nine, with about nine minutes gone. Childress with ten. Childress has provided that offensive spark. 10-0 run by the Deeks. Duval weaves through traffic, and here's Wilberton on the deflection. Olivier Saw went for the dunk. All you got to do is lay that one in the basket. Allen the other way. Euro and no. It'll be on Childress. Seven on Wake Forest, second on Childress. You know, Wilbekin probably threw that ball to Saw just a little too early. But the guy who was back there was Grayson Allen. I think Saar could have just laid that in, not worried about the dunk, and then Allen makes you pay for it. He gets out and he goes. Two shots for Grayson Allen, three for three tonight. Scoreless in the second half, no longer. 14 for Allen. One of the things about Grayson Allen is I have watched him play. He's always been a guy who likes to get out and go. Yeah, we mentioned his second half uh, not up to the standards of the first half, but he's still out there fighting on every single play. 15 for Allen, the lead back to 11, stops the wake run. In the old days, we used to call Gallen, uh, Allen a guy who liked to, didn't mind sticking his nose in there. So now here Duke with Wake Forest suddenly getting it going a little bit, going to his zone. Childress bangs on the three. But whether you're in a man-to-man -man or a zone with as hot as Childress is right now, you've got to find him. 13 now for Brandon Childress. No hesitation at all. No field goals for the Blue Devils in the last five minutes. Carter tries to change that and does. Back down the other way. Brown had it blocked off the glass. Score the bucket. Nice job by Wake to get out and push, but for Mike Krzyzewski and his guys, it's really a great feeling to have people down inside to whom you can throw the ball and they'll go get you a basket. Eight-point game. Number four, Duke now. After seeing Wake go to a 10-0 run. And the first piece of real momentum for Wake Forest in a long time, Dan. Keep in mind that Durrell Moore has three personal fouls, and he and Carter are battling very hard down on the inside. Six to shoot for Allen. Long oh, oh. He threw it to Bagley out of his back pocket. 
he doesn't throw that ball there unless he sees him, but I don't understand how he could see him with all the pressure he was under. The miss from Wilbekin and Bagley to rebound. You see, if you wait, you got to keep up the defensive pressure. Carter calling for it. The catch. Bagley the rebound and a foul on the perimeter against Childress. And Childress moved underneath and beneath him trying to block out. This is just a heck of a pass by Grayson Allen. He's basically fallen out of bounds with Doral Moore standing right on top of him, and yet somehow he's able not only to see Bagley, but throw him a perfect pass. So here's Bagley now, 11 points, eight rebounds. One hand good. We talked about Bagley's struggles in the first half, but Wes, he's going to get his standard double double. Yep. And that'll be seven against the league and 16 on the year in 20 games. I think in the next eight minutes and 52 seconds, he'll probably get two rebounds. Be an upset if he doesn't. To say the least. <laughs> right, now, now, Duke has answered this Wake Forest run, and so what Wake Forest has to do is make another one. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, that's a dangerous pass. Long more. Got knocked around. Allen finally picked it off. Here's Trent on the outlet. And he'll stuff it home. 15 for Gary Trent Jr. That ball just does not stick in Grayson Allen's hands. He knows where his guys are. He knows who's open. That was a great pass. And that baseball pass sometimes is a hard pass to throw because it's hard to control the ball. Long more. Batted away by Carter. Here's Allen, skip for O'Connell, Trent from the corner. And Moore pulls it away. Saar and Trent both went down in the deep corner. Here's Shawnee Brown at the other end for the layup. You know, that was the layup, but that was a really tough shot. And the whole action covered every inch of the 94 feet. Under eight to play. O'Connell, Allen, Bagley against Moore. Got him in the air, and there's the fourth on Doral Moore. Nine on Wake Forest. Duke's lead is 12. Marvin Bagley starting to come alive. Gary Trent Jr. as well. We're back after a word from your local ACC station. For Wake Forest, 32 points off those turnovers for the Duke Blue Devils. That's just, that's hard to overcome. So here is Bagley to the line. Now this is a Duke team that is so good offensively, you don't need to be giving them any help. Now five of seven at the line is Marvin Bagley the third. And the crowd to their feet. Well, this is a big deal. Yeah, free sandwich in the offing, but Bagley kills that off. Yeah, they have a promotion here that in the last eight minutes of the game, and if an opposing player goes to the free throw line and misses two free throws, everybody in attendance gets a chicken sandwich. Yep. Sort of changes the way you watch basketball in the last eight minutes. <laughs> Shondi Brown with Brandon Childress. Inside seven and a half to go. Childress has been hot in the second half and keeps it going. He's powering the Deeks offensively, Dan. 15 now for Brandon Childress. Now he has been the one guy who has been making some jump shots, which we said was going to be a big key for the Deacons. And with all the problems they've had tonight, they are still within range. It, of course, it's a very difficult time to get climb against an offensive team as good as Duke. Ball screen, Carter on the give and go from Trent, and there's Thompson's fourth foul. 10 on Wake Forest with 6.52 to go. And a quick check of the Honda Top 25, brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Four ACC schools there. Clemson at 18, losing to number two Virginia tonight. Number four Duke in action. And of course, 10th ranked Carolina loss last night. And I still ask you, how's Louisville not in that Top 25? Now, and I don't have an answer to that question, Wes, but uh, it's going to be hard for the ACC or any other of the power conferences to maintain five or six teams in the top 25 because they beat one another up within conference play. Well, here we go again. He just missed one. We have another chance for some chicken. The consequence 
of a sandwich. Carter made it. So the sandwich lovers in the crowd are 0 for 2. Yep. They've been denied twice. And both of them were very dramatic free throws on my end <laughs> by both Bagley and Wendell Carter. 12 point game. Thompson caught the ball in the middle of that Duke zone, but Thompson has not played very many minutes tonight. Only seven minutes when he came in once more, went out with the foul problems. And Thompson picked up two fouls in the first three minutes of the ball game tonight. Trent, a three. Routed off. O'Connell, the follow on the offensive glass. He has seven tonight. And he's been a nice spark off the bench. We saw him get a steal and a layup, hit a three, and now he gets the offensive rebound and scores. Childress attacking and a reach-in foul. And that'll be against O'Connell. First on Alex O'Connell, six on Duke. And we told you about the showdown with number two Virginia on Saturday at Cameron. And then Monday night, Notre Dame is there. The Blue Devils off to St. John's at the Garden. And then in the big game. Yep. North Carolina. Dan will be there with Tim Brando on the ACC Network in Chapel Hill on the 8th. But th that game on Saturday against Virginia, though, West, that has a chance to be one of the more interesting games that you'll see this year in college basketball. Childress missed everything on the three there. Well, he's been so good. Not going to make them all. 14 point Duke lead, under six to go now in Winston Salem. But this is a Duke team that has scored fewer than 81 points only once all year, playing against a Virginia team that has scored more than 81 only twice all year. Trent going to be called for the offensive foul. His first, seven now on Duke. No free throws at the 536 mark. No player control. That's now 10 turnovers for the Duke Blue Devils. Don't forget our triple header on Saturday. Some of you will see Miami, Florida State round two, Syracuse and Pittsburgh at four o'clock also, and then at eight o'clock, prime time, Wake Forest and Louisville at the Yum Center. Deacons go to Derby City against the Cards, who tomorrow night are in Coral Gables. Dan said that's the big game on the four-game card tonight, or tomorrow night in the ACC. Brown. What a runner good off the baseline for Shawnee Brown. And Brown has had a solid game. We've talked about the fact that Crawford and Wilbekin have basically been quiet, but it's been Childress and Brown stepping up and producing points in the backcourt for Wake Forest. 14 for Brown. Bagley out front. Now O'Connell under five to play. 12-point game again. And get Wes, we might remind everybody, remember Keyshawn Woods not available for the Demon Deacons this evening. Carter a three. Of course he can make a three. 12-3 of the year for Wendell Carter Jr. He's got 20 tonight. He's not a high volume three-point shooter, but he is a high percentage three-point shooter. Pushes the lead back to 15 with four and a half to go. Although you probably want to get a little more pressure on Carter out there, but I'd rather have him shooting out there than dunking it. Batted away, and Mitchell reached around to foul Bagley. And Donovan Mitchell draws his third. And a couple of free throws coming up for the Blue Devils. And well, there's no such thing in the ACC anywhere as an easy schedule, but this, this good heavens. Well, we were talking today that about Danny Manning's schedule, and then I was reminding you that BC's first three road games were what Virginia Carolina and then the other night at Louisville on Sunday afternoon I mean there, there are no layups anywhere Dan no but that that schedule we just showed you for Wake Forest that's that'll grow some hair on your chest Bagley's got 16 double doubles Dan seven against the league And he's got 11 points, now 12 points, and seven rebounds in the second half. Yeah. And a 17-point lead for number four, Duke. And a nice response by the Duke Blue Devils. Wake cut it to eight, and the crowd was into it, and Wake just couldn't hang on. Childress another three. Three of them in this second half. He's got 18 tonight. 16 in the frame. As we go under four to play. 
And Wes Duval not having a very good offensive game tonight. He spent a lot of time on the bench, and Grayson Allen has basically taken over the ball handling responsibilities and done a really nice job. And we'll get a timeout after the foul on Childress. A lot of plays at the iron tonight for both schools. Doral Moore's headline to Deeks, Bagley, and Trent for the Blue Devils. Tonight at the Coliseum in Winston-Salem. What a remarkable basketball life for Tim Duncan, Dan. Allen hits them both. 17 for Allen, 16-point Duke lead. You like this zone the Blue Devils employ from time to time, Dan? You know, I think it really helps them because it forces teams that to have a pretty good movement going against them. It forces them to stand around. That's what we saw against Miami. And yeah. Duke is primarily a man-to-man -man team, but this is a very young team. And it's I think that's the hardest thing to do is put a defensive concept together with so many young players. And sometimes the zone helps. Now, they don't play the zone the way Syracuse plays the zone, but... I think it does help him from time to time, and there Bagley picks up another offensive foul. And he and Mitchell jockeying. Fourth on Marvin Bagley, the third, and player control means no free throws, despite Wake being in the bonus. Duke's in the double bonus as we work through the final 307. And Bagley just trying to force his way. But the zone, the zone is a very good change of pace. You know, I don't think the Blue Devils can do it, can play it like Syracuse does, and that means you play it all the time, exclusive of any other defense. There's more again. Hasn't Eight. missed a shot. That's six offensive rebounds of his 12 total. You go back to Sunday, he's now made 10 straight from the floor. As Doral Moore from Atlanta. Fine ball game here tonight. He's got 18. Childress has a career high as well for the Deacons with 18. Allen got caught in the air. They got knocked back out of bounds. Last touch by Wake Forest, says Roger Ayers. Now that time, if you're going to take the ball like that, I think you have to shoot it. Once you leave your feet, it's going to be very difficult for you to make a pass. Up that loss, as hard as it's going to be, though, Dan. Well, you don't have any time to do it. You're in the middle of a brutal ACC schedule. You certainly got to do everything on the fly. Nobody for Clemson has to do everything, but everybody on that team has to do a little bit more. And it's going to be, it's going to take a little while for people to adjust to the new roles. Carter working on Moore. Two to shoot. And, and that's Doral Moore fouls out. So Moore will foul out of the ball game with 2.18 to play. Wendell Carter Jr. heads to the line. And he's our Chevy performance of the game tonight. 20 points, 10 rebounds. And we told you his ninth double-double, his fourth against the conference, his second against the Deacons. And how about this, Wes? In addition to those numbers, he's also got two assists, he's blocked two shots, and he has a steal. And Doral Moore, 18 points, 10 straight field goals for Doral Moore, dating back to Sunday and then 9 of 9 tonight. Nothing more you can ask from Doral Moore if you are Danny Manning and the Wake Forest coaching staff. He had an outstanding game. 18 points and a dozen boards tonight for Doral Moore. Front rim miss for Wendell Carter. Here we go with the sandwiches again. 14-point <laughs> game with 2.18 to play. Carter denied them earlier, and we're here. Just you will not eat free at the hand of Wendell Carter in this building. Just disappointment all around. I think Coach Odom was really looking forward to that chicken sandwich, too. <laughs> Childress and the rebound for Carter. Final two minutes here from Winston-Salem. This will be five straight for Duke and seven of their last eight. Will push them to six and two in the league and 18 and two overall. Wake Forest is going to take their sixth straight loss and eight of their last nine. There's Trent on the layup. How about that? You know, you're, you're you're in a situation where you're trying to run the clock down, and Duke has multiple guys that can score at the end of the shot clock. 
And Mitchell reaches in, draws the foul, and that's four on Donovan Mitchell. I've been impressed tonight with the physical way Gary Trent Jr. has gone to the basket. Well, he days. is a big, strong guy, Wes. We've been talking about his three-point shooting ability, but one of the things that you, you, you hear about him all the time is how well he can go to the basket. And even though Duval has not had a good game tonight, hasn't scored at all, this is a group of fabulous freshmen. Yep. And a devilish future, well, in the future, I'm afraid, for Duke fans doesn't go beyond this year. Because I don't think any of those guys will be around next year. Bagley's night is over. But you can sure enjoy him this year. Yeah, no question. It's a talented, talented group. And I... The one thing you respect, I think, more about their success is that how quickly they have gelled in terms of the mission that Mike Krzyzewski wants, the program standards, philosophies he has, and the way this team is moving forward seemingly step by step. And Wes, you're absolutely right, and I think that's the key for Duke is they are moving forward. They're still tinkering a little bit. Uh, the guys are still getting used to one another. They're playing better defense, certainly. Yeah. This is a team that I don't think has come anywhere close to reaching its full potential. Shawnee Brown, little runner on Delorier, good. We got to be encouraged by Brown, who's got 16 tonight, 10 in the second half for Wake Forest. And Trent and Duke here in the final minute and change. One minute. Crawford goes to work defensively against Gary Trent Jr. Down the lane and the soft runner bounces off the back iron and Childress the rebound. Crawford a catch and shoot. Long three for Crawford good. Second field goal of the night for Crawford. And obviously his first three. He's had a tough night, but he's actually now reached double figures because he's made five free throws, but a very difficult night for Crawford and for Wilbick. And, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think it was because Duke did such a nice job with pressure against the ball. They really did a nice job keeping the Deacons out of the lane. 82 to 68. By the way, that's Jordan Goldwire, the freshman from Norcross, Georgia, handling the ball. He's on the floor for the first time tonight for Wake Forest, or for Duke, and Wake Forest has brought Mello Eggleston onto the deck as well for the first time tonight. Six to shoot. Trent fouled at the rack. And free throws with 18 seconds left. Donovan Mitchell fouls out of the ball game and don't forget on Saturday at four o'clock you'll see either Pitt at Syracuse or Syracuse at Pitt I should say or Miami at Florida State by the way the Hurricanes beat the Knolls on a Sunday night about three weeks ago Dan I think that's a really good game and for Miami how about their week they've got Louisville and then they've got Florida State as we said there's no easy marks in the ACC but yep. You just have to scratch your head <laughs> how some of these guys are going to handle this. The Knowles are three and four in the league, 14 and five overall. They host Georgia Tech tomorrow night at the Tucker Center. Final 18 seconds tonight, Winston-Salem is Gary Trent Jr. Knocks down both free throws. Pretty nice effort for Trent. Well, you read scouting reports about Trent, and everybody talks about his explosiveness, and we saw that on display here tonight. He's not only an outstanding three-point shooter, but he can get to the goal, and he can be a load to try to defend. Final 10 seconds. Wake Forest headed to Louisville on Saturday, and Duke back home for a huge single game contest in the ACC slate against number two Virginia. Those single games Dan have found a way since the league went to beyond the round robin. Those single games have become very very critical seemingly almost every year. And now Duke Virginia stands to be one this year. Delorier going to foul out of the ball game. Here in the final. 3.6 and Olivier Saar from Toulouse in southern France. 
gets his first point of the night. I thought he flashed some potential tonight. He did a nice job moving his feet and defensively. Of course, he needs about 20 more pounds. He's still just 18 years old, by the way. And Duke will put the ball in play, and the Blue Devils on to their fifth straight win and seven of their last eight. 84 to 